Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Today is the day we've all been waiting for, at least for a few weeks. <laughs> Today is the first clue for our 2024 mystery quilt called Sunday Stars. Now y'all, you're going to find two downloads down in the description box. I'm going to walk you through what they are here in just a second, but I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, it would be really helpful if you uh, click the subscribe button so you can get notified when I upload new videos each Friday for the next good long while we're going to be doing clues for this quilt it is a free quilt project so feel free to follow along print your clues tell your friends y'all make the quilt together it should be a lot of fun now if you have missed the introduction video there is a link to the playlist where all of these videos are going to be grouped together so you can but quickly find them each week and if you missed anything you can just scroll to the videos before this they should be in chronological order to when they come out so make sure you save that playlist so you can find where everything is grouped together okay are you ready let's come down to the pressing board i'm going to show you what these downloads are okay the first download consists of three sheets okay I'm going to go through them with you now. The first sheet is going to tell you the strips we're going to cut from our yardage for the large border, the binding, and the small border. So for my border and binding, I'm going to be using the dark pink fabric and the brown fabric. We're going to go over this. I'm going to show you uh, me cutting the fabric into the strips. And y'all, we're going to just cut this from our yardage and just set it aside till much 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 later in the quilt but before we start cutting into our yardage for our pieces i want to ensure that we have this cut and just saved and set aside okay it is a really good idea to starch and press your fabrics before you start cutting so you'll see uh, when we get to that here in just a second i'm going to cut off a section and I do take it in starch and give it a good press before I cut it, my strips from this piece, okay? So from our dark pink fabric, we're gonna cut the outside border of our quilt. We're gonna be cutting eight strips that are three and a half inches wide. From the brown fabric, we're gonna have an inner border, a small inner, inner border. We're gonna cut eight strips that are one and a half inches wide and we're going to cut eight binding strips and i like to cut my binding at two and a half inches wide if you like a thinner binding you can certainly cut a thinner binding uh, but you'll see me cutting my strips at two and a half inches wide for my binding i tell you what let's go do that now and i'll walk you through me uh, cutting the fabric for the borders and the binding so coming over here to the cutting table, what I did is I measured over 29 inches from my dark pink fabric and I cut myself off a section. Then I'm just gonna fold up that extra yardage and set that aside. All of that fabric will be used to cut the pieces for the paper piecing portion of this project. So I have 29 inches here. I'm gonna set that aside and bring over the brown fabric and I'm going to measure over 34 inches and cut myself off a section of fabric from that yardage. Now, both of these pieces here, I'm gonna take them over and give them a starch and a quick press. And now that they're starched and pressed, I can go ahead and cut my strips. So I'm gonna fold it nice and neat, clean up the raw edge, and then I can cut start cutting my strips so from the brown fabric i'm going to first cut eight strips that are two and a half inches wide and this will be for my binding now this fabric is folded over so each cut that i'm making i'm actually cutting two strips so there's my binding fabric for this quilt and now i'm going to cut my small inner border and that's going to be eight strips that are an inch and a half wide. So one of these strips I accidentally miscut and it's a little bit wider. So I have to go in and fix that. Remeasure and recut. 
Do you ever do that? <laughs> I just cut it on the wrong line. So there we go. I fixed it. And I'm going to be cutting my last set of strips here for a total of eight small inner border strips. Now I'll bring over the dark pink fabric and I'm going to fold that in half and clean up that raw edge. And then I'm going to cut eight strips that are three and a half inches wide. Again, this fabric is doubled over. So each cut that I make, I'm actually cutting two strips at one time, which just saves a little bit of time. I'm going to tell you, I love this Creative Grids long ruler. I think it's like 24 inches long. It makes these long cuts super duper easy. If you look at the right lines when you're cutting. <laughs> So there are our borders and our binding for this quilt. And we're going to just set this aside till later. Okay, we have all of that saved for down the road. So just put that in a little box, a bin, a Ziploc tote. Uh, just set it aside somewhere you're not going to lose it, right? And let's take a look at the other two pages in the first download. Y'all, I'm going to do something a little bit different and a little bit fun on this mystery quilt. Each week as I release clues, I'm going to update this picture right here. So you're going to see where the pieces fit into the quilt. And the quilt is going to start revealing itself each week as we go along. So right here, you're going to see we have an outside border. It's going to be hard to see, but it's a very thin brown border, inner border. And the pieces that we are paper piecing this week are going to go right here in our quilt. <laughs> so each week, this quilt is going to reveal itself. So if you're somebody who is on the fence and you don't too much like the idea of a mystery quilt and you like to see it start coming together or it revealed before you start investing the time and the money into a quilt project follow along and see how it progresses and it might be that as we're halfway through you decide you want to have a sew-a-thon and catch up with us right so you're going to see where our pieces that we are doing each week right up here now for our paper piecing portion uh this week for our very first clue I have the two fabrics that I'm using. I'm using the lighter background color and the light pink. And this is going to tell you strips to cut uh, so that you get the most usage out of your yardage. Okay, I've already done the math for you. And uh, so that is here. And I have a little note down here. When you, If you're cutting strips to cut your template pieces from, save any luck extra pieces of strips and any pieces you cut because we can use them down the road in additional clues which means when we get to those clues you might have to do less cutting right so save whatever uh, you don't use from the strips we're cutting this week and I'll cut these strips out with you so that you can see how that I how I do it and we'll do that here in the first video. Additional weeks, we might not have to take the time to show you me cutting the strips and cutting the pieces, but I will give you how many strips to cut to get the number of pieces that you need. Is that confusing? <laughs> uh, so that's page two, right? And then page three are your templates that you're going to use. If you like using templates, some people don't. Uh, but if you like using templates to pre-cut your pieces before you get to the paper piecing portion, then that's the third page. I give you quite a bit of extra, right? There should be half an inch uh, of extra play space for each one of your templates. And they are lettered A, B, and C. That's going to correspond with our paper piecing foundations. And I'm also telling you how many of each piece that you need. Okay. All right. So that's the first download. The second download is going to look just like this. 
whoop, that's the second page. It's two pages. That's the first page. There is a one inch print box. So you can check to make sure that your foundations are going to be true to size. And you're going to see a little note down here. Print six copies for a 12 for a total of 12 units. All right. So this is one unit and this is one unit, right? The PDF is two pages. You're going to print six copies. That's going to give you a total of 12 units. Now this unit is in two pieces. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut and glue it together. But ultimately you want to end up with 12 of these. Okay. Uh, 12 paper foundations is going to make up our very first clue. They are um, labeled as clue number one. And uh, if you look closely, there's a light pink where the light pink fabrics are going to go. And then, of course, the light background will be uh, have a light background in those sections there. You need a, tw a total of 12 of these. And these should measure 12 and a half inches uh, total from edge to edge. So let me walk you through uh, separating the two pieces and gluing them together. Now, of course, you can use scissors to cut your pieces out. I just find it helpful to have a, a rotary cutter. I have this little small one that I use for cutting paper. And it definitely speeds up the process, especially when you're talking about doing multiple uh, cuttings with multiple different paper foundations, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to separate in between these two sections. And then we are cutting out each piece on this outside line. Just like that. If it's not exact, that's okay. Because when we trim these pieces up, we're actually using the inner line with the quarter inch mark on our ruler. Y'all might hear my bird in the background. Now I'm giving you some extra space to do a gluing tab. And so on the longer piece, I'm just going to cut off a section like this. But you will see there's some space beyond that little dotted line right there, right? On a smaller piece, it has that same dotted line and I'm gonna cut directly on that line. And then finish cutting everything out on the outside line. Just like that. And then you can use a glue stick or some wet glue on this extra tab beyond that line right there. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. And now we're going to line up the second smaller portion of the paper foundation right in line with that line. Just like that. And that's how these two sections come together. And you're going to do a total of 12 of these. So let me go do my last one. And then we're ready to start doing some paper piecing. Oh no, we have to cut our fabric first. <laughs> let me go uh, prep the last foundation. And then I'm going to meet you over at my cutting mat. And we're going to cut strips for the uh, pieces. So here we are with the light background fabric. Now I've cut three strips that are three and a half inches wide, and I'm just gonna stack them right on top of each other, nice and straight. So there's three strips. So we're actually cutting through multiple layers of fabric. That would be six pieces each time we make a cut. Now we're going to be using the C template on the background fabric and there are several different ways that you can cut your pieces. You can use a rotary cutter and a ruler just like I'm doing now and just line up the ruler with your paper piece. 
and make your cuts. And that's what I'll do with these so that you can see how that's done. And each time I move, I just rotate that little paper template so that I make all of my cuts from these three strips. And this is a pretty easy way of using the templates to cut out your pieces. So that's 12 little triangles from the C template so far. And the good news is there is a half inch extra around each one of these pieces. So from these three strips, I'm going to do four cuts, just like you see here. That's going to give us 24 little C triangles. And then all of this extra here with these strips, we're going to save that because down the road, we're going to use that for a different clue. I'm just going to stack these and set them off to the side. Then I'm going to bring over my light pink strips. And we have two different strip sets for these pieces. So first, we're going to be cutting two strips that are four and a quarter inch uh, wide. And we're going to be using our B template. And this time, I'm just using a water soluble marker and tracing the template before I make my cuts. So this is just a different way uh, for you to get that template onto your strips. And you might know of a different way of cutting out your templates. And uh, I just thought I would show a couple of different examples and one might work better for you than the other. So I'm just tracing the template. We're gonna need 12 of the B pieces. And I confused myself <laughs> with the math, but this is right, two strips. That's actually four layers of fabric. See that, four layers. We're gonna cut out three of these and that's gonna give us our 12 pieces. So now that I've traced the template on there, now I can come in with my ruler and make my cuts. So that's just two different ways of showing you how to uh, use your templates to cut your pieces. The little nuggets you see me cutting off here, you can choose to cut them off or you can just leave your triangles uh, full size without trimming off that extra bit if you wanna save a little bit of time. So there we go, there are 12 B triangles and that extra bit, you're gonna save it. So next we're gonna bring in the three strips that are four inches wide. I'm just gonna stack them nice and straight right on top of each other. And I'm gonna be using the A template now, if you measure the A template, that should measure exactly four inches. It's a four inch square. <laughs> so you don't necessarily need to use the paper template for this. You could just use your cutting mat and your ruler and cut your four inch squares. I'm gonna make four cuts. That's gonna give me 24 A pieces. The extra little bit of these strips, save it <laughs> for down the road. So there are all of our fabrics for our paper piecing. Now comes the fun part, right? <laughs> we have pre-cut all of our pieces to do all 12 of our units for our first clue. And just to let you know, 
to save time in future videos, I probably won't show you cutting out the templates. I will give you the measurement of the strips and I believe that that is the best way to save yardage, right? To get the most use of it. But in future videos, we're not gonna take the time to cut these out. I'm just gonna give you how many strips and how wide and you can cut your pieces and we're gonna save time each week so you can just start sewing, right? But there are all of our pieces for our first 12 clues and I'm just going to set them off to the side. Now I'm going to be using my light pad today. There are several different ways to do paper piecing. If you are extremely new, what I suggest is looking back through a history of all my different paper piecing projects because each one I show a little bit of a different way. Usually I tell you to pre-fold on the lines in between each one of your sections. We have 12 units we're doing this week. That would take a little bit of time, right? So to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna use my light pad. Although the placement of these fabrics is gonna be super easy this week, right? But I'm gonna use my light pad and there we go. It's a little bright, isn't it? I'm sorry, it's gonna really throw things off. Now I want to show you on your, on your paper foundations, there are letters a c b c a that corresponds with the different fabrics that we've uh cut out right your different templates so when we're in the b section we're pulling from the b template fabrics right and then there are numbers one two three four five that's the order in which we're going to add our pieces so we're going to start right down here with number one I'm gonna flip this template to uh, the other side. So I'm placing my template or my foundation with the right side facing down. We're gonna be using an A fabric. So let me pull one of those. The very first fabric, we're going to place it with the right side facing up. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of a glue stick just to help that fabric stay where it's supposed to stay. And I'm going to position my fabric so that it overlaps all four lines of that first position. And I'm just gonna give that a press with my finger. Now we're gonna flip it over. And the second piece we're adding is a C piece. So let me grab one of those. Now the C piece, what I want you to see and why using a light pad can be really helpful. The C piece is going to be added like this. So what I like to do is figure out which direction my C piece is gonna go, right? It is situated with the long part of the triangle going just like this. So just like that. And then we're flipping right side down. Just like that. We want to make sure that both of these fabrics extend at least a quarter of an inch beyond this first line, right? And we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine. And the very first seam we are sewing is directly right on that line right there. So let's go over to the sewing machine. So here we are at the sewing machine. I have uh, my open toe foot on because I'm hoping that maybe you can see a little bit easier. And I have lowered my stitch length to a 0.8. We're gonna give that a try. I am using the newsprint paper, which is super duper thin. So I do think a little bit longer of a stitch length might work out okay as far as removing the papers once we're all done. But I am gonna try a 0.8 stitch length and see how that goes. And I'm just pinching these fabrics in place and we're gonna bring it right on over. And I like to start sewing beyond the paper edge, directly on that line and off of the paper edge.
So there is our very first seam for the mystery quilt. Let's come back over to the pressing board. Okay, sorry about that. I had to adjust the light. <laughs> this light pad wants to throw my camera off all the, all the time. Now, just to let you know, I know I've recommended this light pad several times, but at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival, I bought a new light pad, and I'm so excited to show you that. Uh, keep your eyes open. Hopefully next time, uh, next week sometime, I'm going to be showing you the cross quilt. And in that video, I'm going to be using my new light pad. But I wanted to use this light pad since I've recommended it so many times throughout the years. And I've talked about this one before the mystery quilt. So we're using this one for the first one. But don't be surprised to see a different light pad coming soon. All right. So we have our very first seam. And what we're going to do is, let me actually bring you over here to, here we go. <laughs> we're going to fold the paper up right on that sewn line. And because we sewed right through the paper, it's going to come over really easy. And we're going to trim all of the extra fabric, leaving just a quarter of an inch allowance beyond that fold right there. See that? And now we're gonna go ahead and just press this. So we can open up our template, add a little bit of glue. I like to use the glue because I feel like it holds that piece of fabric over. I have strings everywhere. That first string was a long one. There we go. And now I am just folding that fabric right over. And I am just using my fingernail. You can use a uh, seam roller. And I'm just pressing that fabric right on over. Now the awesome thing about my new pressing board is it has a tempered glass top that I can put on it and I can press right on my light pad. I am so stoked about it, but today we're going to be doing this. All right, so that's the second fabric. The next one we're adding is the B piece, right? See that? I'm going to bring the B fabric over and it's going to be situated just like this. See that? With the right side facing up and then we're going to flip it with the right side facing down. Now you can just see it through that light fabric. See that line right there? We want this fabric to extend beyond that line right there at least a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to line it up just like that. And we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine. And we're sewing on that line right there between sections two and three. And even from this from the opposite side, you can see that that fabric extends over at least a quarter of an inch. We're going to come right here. There's our second seam. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right to that B section. Oh no, <laughs> I wanted, while we're over here, I wanted to fold that over and trim away the extra fabric. Just remove that extra bulky fabric, right? It doesn't need to be in there. It's just gonna add bulkiness to our quilt. So we're gonna trim first and then flip our next piece over, right? There we go. and finger press that right in place. Now the awesome thing about this quilt, y'all, are there are going to be lots of little triangle pieces, right? Sunday stars. The stars have lots of triangles. But the beauty of paper foundation piecing is that the paper is gonna act as a stabilizer and keep all of these bias cuts in place and make them behave, right? I love that. So the next piece that we're doing 
is going to be number four, the C piece. So we're going to bring over another fabric from the C template. I'm just making sure that I have the right side facing up, right? So this is going to have the long part of that triangle, just like that. And that's hard to see because of the light fabric, right? And the light is so bright. But the long part of the triangle, the long part of the triangle, just like that. See that? Right side facing up. And then we flip it over right side facing down. And actually, I can scoot it down just a little bit like that. Now I'm going to bring this over to the sewing machine. And we're going to sew that seam. Okay, I'm going to remember this time we're going to flip that paper over on that seam trim over any extra fabric beyond that quarter of an inch this time there was just a little smidgen I'm going to add a tiny bit of glue right there and flip that fabric right on over I always forget to bring out my seam roller. I think that, that would be really handy. <laughs> All right, so for this clue or this piece, we have one more. And that's going to be an A piece for number five. So I'll bring over an A piece. That's going to go right side facing up like this and right side facing down just like this and we can scoot this over to the other side and make sure we can even scoot it down a little bit like this right that fabric is extending beyond that sew line so let's pick this up and sew this last seam just like all the other seams we're going to flip over the paper foundation and trim away the extra fabric, leaving that quarter of an inch. I like to add just a smidgen of glue right there, make that fabric behave, <laughs> stay in place. Finger press that seam and just smush that fabric right down into the glue for just a minute, right? So here is our piece, just like that. And the only thing we have left to do is to trim it, right? Because we have fabric that extends beyond that paper edge all the way around. And make some space. <laughs> working in a small space there we go so the way we're going to clean this up and trim this unit is there's an inside line all the way around right that inside line all the way around we're going to match that line right there to the quarter inch mark on our ruler right there the quarter inch we're just going to line it up right on that quarter inch mark and trim all four sides. So there's our first side. Our second side. Our third side. nice and straight all the way down and our fourth side so then the big reveal of our finished piece is nice and perfect right don't you love paper piecing now let me bring you over to the pressing board because i just want to show you this let me turn this light off 
And I might have to fix the lighting. Give me one second. Oh no, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, so here's our finished piece, right? Now, one of the beautiful things about paper piece thing is everything is exact. Now, if I tried piecing this, just patchwork piecing, traditional piecing, uh, oftentimes I find that I have varying amounts of fabric at my points, right? So this is the point of a star. And it's really important that when this quilt comes together, we like to keep our points of our stars, right? So it's very important to have that extra quarter of an inch right there. That's going to be our seam allowance. And so with doing paper piecing, I don't have to worry about losing my points because everything is so accurate. So there is one unit of clue number one. And all you have left to do is 11 more. <laughs> but there's one, two, three, four, five pieces in each unit, right? And it goes together really quickly. Once, if you have all your pieces pre-cut, right? I think that takes the longest is just cutting strips and cutting your pieces. But once you're at this stage right here, I think it goes by very fast, right? And if you are sewing through the paper like I am, you can even do chain piecing, right? Working a couple units at a time, back to back chain piecing your seams. I think that would breeze you through these clues as well. That's one of the reasons why I'm sewing through the paper. But another reason is when you have all 12 units that are just like this, I personally am going to leave the paper in for two reasons. It's going to tell me what clue this is that I'm working with. So several weeks down the road, I'm not going to have to try and figure out what unit is this. I know it's clue number one. So when I say get your clue number one and clue number nine, for example, and bring them together, you're not going to have to figure it out. They're labeled. That's one reason I'm leaving the paper in. Another reason is because this paper is acting as a stabilizer for all of these uh, seams that are on the diagonal, right? It's keeping everything perfectly in place. So let's say, for example, that one of the clues has you joining two pieces like this, right? With the paper in, I could line them up like this. And I have my sewing line right there, right? Uh, so that's another reason why I'm choosing to leave the paper in. I know many of you are going to use the method where you're only working with one or two templates and you're not sewing through the paper, you're sewing next to the paper. And that is perfectly fine too. It's gonna save you printing ink and paper, right? And time prepping all of the uh, foundations just uh, make sure you stay organized, keeping maybe in Ziplocs all of your units together and label the Ziplocs, right? No matter which method you use, there's benefits, there's pros and cons to each method, right? <laughs> there's no right way or wrong way. I would just do it whichever way works best for you, right? So there is our very first clue. I hope you have so much fun with it. And what I'm really excited about is if you are on the creative crew, I am looking forward to start seeing your clues posted. Take a picture of it, post it on creative crew. Everybody would love to start seeing what you're sewing, your color combinations. I know many of you are not using this colorway. You're going with something totally different, but there you go, the very first clue. Now, before you know it, we're going to be back to next Friday and a new clue. So again, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. What would be really helpful for me since this is a free project is if you like and share this video, I would appreciate that a lot. And yeah, have fun with this. And um, I don't think it's going to keep you too, too busy. And I certainly think that uh, after the first clue, you're going to kind of get the hang of it, right? And next week, 
I don't think it's going to take you as long. Unless there's more pieces to sew next week than this. <laughs> you never know. It's a mystery, right? Okay, everybody, this has been a lot of fun. If you have questions, post them down below. I'm trying, trying, trying my best to be as quick with answering questions. Um, be patient with me. Uh, but yeah, and you can always reach out to me. There's several ways to get in touch with me down in the description box. And again, this very first clue, the video is going to be longer next week. We're getting right to business. I plan on already having my pieces cut, my templates together, since you see how they come together, right? And we're just going to start sewing so that you can start sewing, right? Okay, everybody. I hope you have fun. I will see you next Friday. Bye, everybody. <laughs>